Hey cool worlds, it's David. Astronomers like myself are obsessed with trying to find new habitable planets out there in the universe. But perhaps this obsession gives us a unique insight into valuing just how precious our own habitable planet truly is. Recently there has been a bunch of news about the climate coming out and I thought that we should really talk about it here on this channel today. First off, since our last video about the climate, the USA has pulled out of the Paris Climate Accord, a plan for nations to report and mitigate their greenhouse emissions. Only two nations initially refused to sign the accord, Nicaragua and Syria, but now the Trump administration has also withdrawn the USA. So this is a major blow because the USA contributes about one-fifth of the planet's greenhouse emissions. To me, the USA now has an obligation to urgently propose an alternative and viable plan to reduce its emissions. It would appear very selfish for the USA, which enjoys some of the highest living standards on the planet, to just idly sit by as the other 195 nations try to reduce their emissions and keep the planet cool but the Earth still warms up as a result of the USA's contribution. When you combine this with the widespread cuts to American climate science happening right now, the USA is becoming increasingly isolated on its stance about climate change. The second piece of climate news relates to the fact that climate skeptics have for a while now pointed out that satellite-based temperature measurements of the Earth show a slower warming than that inferred from surface-based measurements. But recently, a new revised analysis of this satellite data has come out, which corrects for the orbital decay effects of the satellites, and the end result is that these temperature measurements now fall much more in line with the surface-based measurements. Overall, this is giving us a coherent picture now of a 0.17 Celsius degrees temperature rise per decade. This analysis comes from the Remote Sensing Systems Group, which is one of two teams analyzing the same satellite data, the other being the University of Alabama Huntsville. However, the Alabama analysis does still show a low ball estimate for this warming at the moment. Crucially though, the surface measurements show little tension or disagreement with each other, so it looks increasingly likely that this is indeed the true picture. Third climate update, you might recall from a video I made last fall that global sea ice was at an unprecedented and alarmingly low level. It was unclear at the time how the trend would evolve, but here's the updated plot showing that the back end of 2016 was indeed a highly anomalous year. We'll be keeping a close eye on this channel of how this evolves going into the fall of this year as well. Let's hope, fingers crossed, that this is not gonna be the new normal. On a related and depressing note, a gigantic iceberg twice the size of Luxembourg has just broken off the Antarctic ice shelf. It's estimated that when that iceberg melts, it alone will cause a 0.1 millimeter global sea level rise. Finally, the fourth piece of climate news I wanna tell you about relates to an article published in New York Magazine last week. The article entitled The Uninhabitable Earth has been making headlines this week as journalist David Wallace Wells argues that the Earth may well become uninhabitable by the end of this century. He points out that the Arctic permafrost, which is basically frozen soil, contains 1.8 trillion tons of carbon, which, if it thaws, may release methane gas which is a much more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So he argues that this is a tipping point and once this happens, we're gonna have a runaway effect and beyond that point, the future for humanity looks kind of grim. Now, obviously I'm in favor of scientists talking about their concerns about the planet's climate, but scientists and science journalists have an obligation not to cry wolf, not to over-sensationalize our work else we run the risk of losing that most valuable of currencies that scientists have, the public's trust. Whilst indeed methane gas can and indeed is observed to be liberated from permafrost, it's deeply unclear exactly how much methane could be mobilized by projected warming. Slow release scenarios may not be disastrous since methane is degraded in the Earth's atmosphere on an 8.4 year timescale, largely through a chemical reaction with hydroxyl radicals, eventually leading to the formation of formaldehyde. Moreover, the paleo record shows only weak amplifying effects by methane, including during periods warmer than today in the Arctic. Of course, if we end up warming the planet beyond these previous temperatures, then we are at a point where we are unmoored from empirical paleo data, and really it's kind of anyone's guess what's gonna happen after that point. All in all, it certainly seems that methane will have an amplifying effect, but the magnitude is very uncertain. So thanks for watching everybody. If you care about our planet's climate, then make sure you tell others 
and think thoughtfully about what you can do in your life to help. As an exoplanet researcher, I can tell you that we are a very long way off being able to move to another habitable planet anytime soon. This is our home, a jewel in the cosmos. Let's look after this very special part of the universe. So until the next video, stay thoughtful and stay curious.